In years past, people would have a, an attitude about clipping coupons or collecting interest, and that would be most of their income at retirement time. It led, these pe- it led people to believe that the older they got, the more fixed income they should have, more bonds, more CDs, because that was the income that was supporting their standard of living. In the world we live in today, there are preferential items that come from dividends and long-term capital gains. You need to have a mixture of assets that you're using to produce that retirement income for optimal results. On Consider This Program today, Brett Spangler, CPA, part of the FEG team, and myself will break that down for you. Well, good morning and welcome back to Consider the Pro- Consider This Program. I'm your host, Joe Clark. And you are? I'm Brett Spangler. He's Brett Spangler. <laughs> He's over here thinking about the next thing we're going to talk about in this wonderful world of tax. It is tax time. And uh, Brett and I are working on various strategies for you to be able to uh, ponder in your life. I will tell you, when, when people retired, when I first started in this industry, Brett, um, back in the, in the late 80s, um, you still came out of a period of time where the peak of inflation was actually 1980, mm-hmm. right? You came out of a period of time where you could get CDs that were at 8, 10, 12, 14%, right? And so, and so people had a, a tendency to live off of that income that was being produced from there. But some things changed over the last you know, 35 years, if you will, uh, in terms of what's going on. And if you're going to create a, an investment strategy... Uh, We're always going to talk to you at the Financial Enhancement Group about tax diversification. When I talk about tax diversification, what I'm meaning by that is that you have some money that is tax deferred. That could be your IRA or 401k. Hopefully, you have some money that's Roth. That's money that you've already paid taxes on that you never have to pay taxes again. And then you probably should have some money that is after tax that's in a what we call a retail account. So think about having three buckets of money to be able to work with. The reason we do that, if you go to the screen for me, Casey, the reason we do that, and for those of you that are listening on the radio, don't fear, you can go to yourlifeafterwork.com and see the video. But the best way to think about our tax code is this series of stair steps that we have, right? So once you have your adjusted gross income, you've got your itemized deductions, your standard deductions, that will bring you down to your taxable income. That's what you're going to actually have to pay rates on or pay taxes on. So there, there's a, a block of money that we all pay that's at that 10%. And then there's a block of money that we pay at 12%, assuming our income is that high. And then it goes all the way to 22 and it can go all the way up here to this wonderful 37%. Uh, they talk about changing that all the time again. And, and under the Biden administration, that may happen. We don't know what it's going to look like. We do know that it's supposed to sunset December 31st of 2025. So even if if the Biden administration doesn't get changes made, it will revert back to 10, 15 percent, you know, in, in terms of those lower tax brackets and in terms of where they are. So, Brett, what in when I say the word preferential, uh, what does that mean to 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 the taxpayers? Well, in the tax code, there's certain carve outs that they've made sources of income more tax have more tax benefit than others, whether it be long-term capital gains or, or dividends uh, uh, that are qualified dividends. So there are certain items in the ca- tax code uh, that have been made uh, you know, more tax efficient than others. And so what, so what happens, guys, is remember, all tax policy is social policy. Uh, and, and so whatever they're trying to get done um, from a leadership perspective is what you're going to see and in, in, uh, put into the tax code, if you will. So do you remember when qualified dividends came into play? I do. Okay. What year was that? Um, I, that, I don't I don't. 2003. <laughs> okay. Right? It was, it was, uh, so if you go back and you pay attention to the history of the yep. market, right, uh, which, you know, that's not your baby, that's my baby, yep. right? So you had the tech wreck in 2000. Mm-hmm. Um, you had companies that talked about burn rate, let alone profitability, right, yep. that just disappeared, uh, we w- went through, obviously, 2001. 2002 was one of the worst technical years for managing money. A lot of retirements were destroyed. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to incentivize, if you will, companies to pay dividends, right? So when we talk about um, dividends being double taxed, uh, and that, and that conversation is going to come up again more and more and more, if you are a regular corporation, so think AT&T, General Motors, it's what we would call a C corporation. If you're a regular corporation, you're going to pay taxes at the corporate level. 
And then you're going to turn around and Brett and I are going to have to pay taxes on our own return. And what we saw happening more and more in the early 2000s was the dividend distributions were going down. The corporate tax rate was high. People's tax rates were high. And so they made a dividend preferential, right? So what is the tax rate for a dividend? So a dividend, an ordinary dividend is your, is your whatever your marginal rate is. Now, uh, the qualified uh, dividend gets the the long-term capital gain type treatment. It can be, it can be zero. It can be, it can be 15%. So, uh, it gets the, it gets, the uh, the similar benefit to a long-term capital gain. So the, the long-term capital gain, hence the word long, right? You have to own it for a year and a day, Correct. right? When, when we talk about these brackets, and again, you're not able to see this if you're listening on the radio, but I am drawing on a whiteboard right now. Uh, it's actually a blackboard, but it's, you know, it's kind of cute. I love technology. Your effective rate is the average of what you pay on each dollar that you earned. You have to understand when you're doing financial planning, though, you want to pay attention to what that last dollar was taxed at. That's what we call the marginal rate, right? And so when when Brett's talking about these qualified dividends, what happens if, and and for it to be qualified, by the way, it has to be a U.S.-based company. That's just the easiest way to understand it. So when you think about ADRs, American Depository Receipts, um, some of these companies that are huge, but they're not American-based, they do not count as qualified dividends, and they will be taxed at your full marginal rate. Most of the dividends that you're going to have in your portfolio are going to be qualified. And if you look in your 1040, and you should always read your tax return, right, Brett? That's correct. Yeah. Study that puppy so you understand what's happening. But if you break that thing down and you look at it, you will see a line that says dividends, and it talks about what's qualified and what's not, right? So that you can you can kind of pay attention to how that's going. But your tax rate is actually lower on a qualified dividend, even though you didn't necessarily own it for a year, right? It's right. taxed the same rate, the same way a long-term capital gain is is going to be taxed, right? So That's correct. pay attention to your portfolio again. This doesn't matter if you're in an IRA, right? right? This only matters if if you're inside of here. Now, Brett, I've heard, I've heard that you can actually be at a zero percent long-term capital gain rate. How does that work? Well, the, they've carved out the the first two. Brackets um, on the stair step of uh, is it the the ten and the twelve. So if you're the twelve percent or below, essentially you get there's no capital gains on uh, if you don't have to pay any capital gains on a long term capital gain. So or so, a qualified dividend. So again, it's something you've owned for longer than a year and a day, right? right. And, and I know this sounds confusing, P people. I I actually wrote an article, I think it was last year, and said you could be in a zero percent tax break yep. tax rate, and um, Somebody and somebody decided to write all over it and say, you can never be in a 0% tax rate. Well, yes, you can, ladies yep. and gentlemen. And that's why I draw this red line up here to, to help people understand. If you stay in that 12% bracket or below, qualified dividends and long-term capital gains is really at a 0% tax bracket. You know, got to be in the right... Got to be in the right setting, but if you will. But this is why that income strategy, when you're taking money out of IRAs, when you when you take Social Security, when you elect to do those, becomes so critical because we've got to deal with all of your assets and try to figure out how to get you the income that you need to maintain your standard of living while simultaneously keeping the tax rate as low as we possibly can. Right. So when we talk about effective and marginal, remember effective is that average that you pay on each dollar. When we talk about distribution, the effective rate matters. We want to pay attention to what our average tax return is on each dollar that we have. But when we're doing planning on a year-by-year basis, we want to pay attention to that marginal rate because that's the last dollar that you're going to get, you're going to get taxed. So when I, when I look at a portfolio, if I have a bond, and remember, and bonds do not pay interest. People like to say they pay interest. Bonds pay a coupon, Right. Um, it's just important to understand that it's taxed like interest, right? Unless it happens to be a municipal bond. But if I've got a bond that has a, let's just call it a 3% yield Mm -hmm. versus a qualified dividend that has a 2% yield, right? Depending on what tax bracket I'm in, Brad, I could be in much better shape with the dividend. Absolutely. Right. And that's it, it. All of this, the, the best way to think about your tax return is just to understand that it is a it is a symphony or an orchestra that's all working together. So the more income you have on that return, 
the more other things can be taxable. The more your Medicare Part B premiums can be higher, the more taxes you may have to pay on your Social Security. So constructing this and putting it in the right direction is is very, very, very important. Uh, we always talk to people about building that tax diversification uh, as soon as they can when you're starting to, to build a plan uh, that's going there. So I want to, uh, I just want to hear when, when, if somebody talked to you about a dividend yield, how would you explain that to, in, in your language? Well, in, in my language, that would be basically the, what the rate, uh, what, what the dividend is compared to the, the amount invested in, and what the tax is on that. So essentially, if you're getting a dividend at 0%, I mean, that, that's going to be, as we said before, much more preferential than getting maybe a higher percentage at, that's taxable. So, so here's, the, here's the big one that I want you to take home from this, um, especially those of you that are helping your parents with, uh, with, uh, with finances. Nobody wants to pay taxes, right? I, I've, I've, I think I've met two people that really enjoyed doing it, and um, I've, I've always wondered about it. Um, I don't think anybody wants to pay more in taxes. So when people go to sit down with their broker and and they don't have – the broker doesn't have the tax return because my industry says you should always consult your tax advisor. And, right. and they just call you all the time, right? Don't they just <laughs> – yeah. yeah, right. That does not happen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Trust me. Um, but what will happen is I will see people come in that have, you know, a $50,000 muni bond portfolio that – are in a 0% tax bracket, <laughs> right? There's no reason for them to be in munis to get a right. lower interest rate or a lower payment, a uh, lower coupon payment, if you will, a lower yield when they could be using dividends or they could be using long-term capital gains. There's just simply no reason for them to have municipal bonds. And yet we see people do that because they don't understand the tax code, yep. right? So when, when people come in to visit us, what's going to happen is either Aaron or Grant or Dean or Jamie – uh, or Brett, you know, Darren, somebody's going to sit down with you and they're going to give you things that you're going to want to consider today about your tax return, about your investments, about your retirement strategy. Uh, they're going to give you things that you're going to want to consider in the future. And if we choose to partner together, we'll tell you what it is we're going to do for you when we put it into writing. Uh, and that's really where I think it's important. It's You need to understand how this process works. The next steps meeting is complimentary. Simply call 800-928-4001 or go to yourlifeafterwork.com. Get signed up for a meeting. We'd love to be able to spend some time with you.